I know everyone who clicked on this video is wondering, what is a humidifier cord? What is that? Well, there really is no such thing as the humidifier cord. It's just a label that I use to reference a specific jazz type of cord. I'll give you the story about how I first discovered this cord and when I heard it. Many years ago when I was studying with Jim Barnes, composer, I had a lesson one day where he offered to go over one of his more recent pieces that he had premiered and recorded. So he pulled out a score for this work titled Danza Symphonica, which was a more advanced level piece for wind band. And he also had a very nice recording of the piece because it was recently premiered. So what we did is I followed along with the score as the recording played in the background while Barnes was changing the pages. And once we reached the development section of this piece, it slows down into this part where there's softer dynamics being used. And there are these slow harmonic shifts or chord changes where the chords just kind of sustain themselves for a few seconds. And there was this one part specifically where the chord changes into some kind of A-flat chord. That's all I heard at the time. I couldn't hear the rest of the notes because I wanted to go back and look at this score and study it. But Barnes knew me well, and he knew that I loved harmony. And he saw that I was curious as to what kind of chord this was. So when this chord was played, he just teased me and he said, shh, secret chord. And then he turned the page really fast so I couldn't figure out what it was. So of course, I had to find out what kind of chord this was. So I went out and bought a copy of the score, which I still have to this day. And then I also got my hands on a recording of it so I could listen to it while I was studying. But the thing at the time is that there was something familiar about this chord that I heard, and I didn't know why, but I had to find out why this chord sounded familiar. And once I listened to it a few more times, I realized this chord reminded me a lot of the humidifier that we had in my parents' house where I grew up. In Kansas, it gets very cold in the winter, and sometimes it gets down into single digits. And when it gets very cold like that, the air becomes extremely dry. So it's very common for people to use a humidifier in their home to restore some moisture in the air. We had this pretty big, old-fashioned looking humidifier that would sit on top of our stairs. And when it would click on in the winter, it had a specific kind of harmony to it, a very rich kind of chord. And there were lots of overtones that would come out of this humidifier. So in other words, this chord, this very jazzy kind of chord, it sounded very similar to the humidifier in which I grew up with. So what notes spell the humidifier chord? Well, it's just an A-flat dominant seventh chord with three additional added notes. So in total, there's four added notes to this A-flat major chord. It has an A-flat, an E-flat, and a C that's an open structure at the bottom. And then there's a G flat for the seventh between the E flat and the C. And then there's a D natural above the C, which is a sharp 11th. And then there's an F, which is the 13th, or you can think of it as a sixth up an octave. And then the last added note is a B natural, which is a sharp ninth. Now, all of those added notes are important to making the chord sound the way it does. But the most important note is the B natural because that's the sharp ninth. And that's what gives it that very interesting flavor that you don't hear very often. So that B natural is very important in this chord. But let us examine this chord a little more closely and we will see some interesting things going on. It's rare that a chord contains three major sevenths all within the same chord. And that is part of the reason why this chord has such an interesting feeling to it. The first major seventh is between the E flat and the D natural. So this major seventh is between scale degrees five and sharp 11th. The next major seventh is between notes G flat and F. So this one is between scale degrees seven and the sixth. And then the last major seventh is between the C natural and the B natural. And in this case, it's between scale degrees the third, or in this case, the 10th, and the sharp ninth, or you can think of it as the sharp two. And that is part of the reason why this chord has such an interesting feeling to it, and it's very unusual sounding. And this is how it sounds on the piano. It 
It still sounds really good on the piano, this seven note chord. But in the concert band, this is how it sounds. So in both contexts of the piano and the wind band, it sounds great. Now there's a couple different ways that I could think of to use this chord. First of all, the way Jim used it is very good. He's using it very subtly in the background with soft dynamics. And in this case, it's scored for low brass and some of the woodwinds. It starts in the low brass with the tubas and the euphoniums playing the A flat major part. And then there's a trombone playing the G flat, which is the seventh. The horns are also playing a G flat, but they're also playing most of the other notes, the C natural, the D natural, and the F. So the horns are playing a lot of the harmony. But then at the very top, the alto saxophone is playing the B natural. And that, again, like I said, is one of the most important notes to giving the flavor of this jazz chord. But Barnes is also using this chord as the climactic point in the development section. Even though it's played very softly, this is where the harmonic tension reaches its climax. And this chord that leads up to the climax, it's just as interesting. It's like an E flat minor seventh chord the D flat would be the seventh in the context of E flat minor. And this is over a C major chord in the low brass. Meanwhile, there's also an A natural on top in the woodwinds and the A natural is the sharp 11th. So this is also a very complex chord. That looks pretty messy and busy like this. So if I reduce this harmony to just whole notes, you'll be able to see the chords a lot more clearly. But another way you could use it is that if you wanted to have it for accented notes in the brass, you could use it for specific accents to highlight the rhythm. Another way that you could use it is that you could build up to this chord so that it hits a climactic point in your piece. Now I think the main thing is that you don't want to use this chord for too long and too often because it will lose its magic if it's there for too long. Just save it for those very specific moments in a work where you want to draw attention to that chord. In the middle of April, I'm going to be sharing a piece that I wrote not too long ago titled The Unchanging for String Orchestra. I really look forward to sharing that with you and I hope you enjoy it. I am composer Britt Andrew Burns. Thank you for watching, and I will see you on the next video.